All right, welcome back to these chemistry videos on uh, topics that we're discussing. Today we're going to look at types of chemical reactions. For our class, we look at five general types. This uh, is certainly not the only way you can classify reactions, and there are different names used as well, but these are the names that we use. So specifically, we talk about synthesis, where two or more relatively simple things turn into one complicated product. So this will only be one product for a synthesis reaction. A decomposition reaction is the exact reverse of a synthesis where we take one relatively complex reactant and turn it into two or more simple products. Single replacement are where similar parts trade. Metals trade with metals, nonmetals trade with nonmetals. A double replacement is where cations trade places. And then combustion is going to be burning when we're in the presence of oxygen. So let's take a little closer look into these five different reaction types. We'll start with synthesis where we take A plus B and that yields AB. So simple, simple into something a little bit more complicated. This general format will be on each of the subsequent slides. You're going to want to put this into your notes uh, in the general reaction patterns part of your notes. If we happen to be using a note card just to keep track of information, you'd want to have this as your general reaction patterns on your note card. <clears throat> So, as we said before, two or more simple things into one more complicated product. This is going to be exothermic because the amount of energy here and here is greater than the amount of energy that's stored in that product. This is more stable, and because of that, energy needs to be released from this reaction. And that tends to be exothermic. That's not necessarily always the case. <clears throat> two examples, magnesium plus oxygen turns into MgO. So notice that we're putting the metal first. Um, or the least electronegative and the more electropositive atom goes first. Likewise down here, hydrogen plus oxygen, more electropositive goes first. This is actually the reaction that we use for balloons, and you know that when we blow up balloons in class that we're seeing fire and uh, heat coming out of those balloons, so we know that that's exothermic. <clears throat> take a look at the synthesis example video uh, where we are going to take aluminum and iodine and make aluminum iodide. So you see that I have a watch glass sitting on a bed of sand that helps the watch glass sit flat. I'm adding some water to the aluminum iodine mixture. Shortly here you'll see some purple smoke. That purple smoke is the iodine sublimating from a solid straight to a gas. There's that purple smoke. And then we are going to see a pretty vigorous bright light which is the formation of the aluminum iodide. You can start to see it at the top of the pile. It's turning white. There's your aluminum iodide that we're forming. And there's that white light that we were talking about with some more of the iodine sublimating off the surface of that watch glass. Iodine gas isn't good to breathe in, so we're running this inside of a fume hood. After watching that video, um, we're going to move into our decomposition reaction, which is the exact opposite, where we take a relatively complicated reactant and turn it into two or more simple products. Because this is a relatively stable way for atoms to be, we need to apply energy to break these two apart. We're taking the distance of those two atoms and increasing that which is going to require energy being applied. Typically we do that with heat, but we can also do that with something like electricity. Uh, for example, when we're taking water and um, doing electrolysis to water, we're using electricity to break water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. Two examples here. We have ammonium dichromate. This is a pretty complicated looking formula, and that's being broken into several smaller, simpler compounds. Uh, likewise, this is hydrogen peroxide. We're breaking that down into water and oxygen gas. Um, interestingly, this occurs in the presence of a catalyst. That's why MnO2 is listed above the arrow because it's not a reactant or a product. It's just there. And that makes this reaction go more quickly. It's not used up. It's actually still in the reaction container when we are done. So the example that we're going to do is actually the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide like we saw on the previous slide, uh, but we're going to call this a special demonstration called elephant toothpaste. Take a look. 
So here I have hydrogen peroxide in a flask. I'm gonna add a catalyst. In that flask is some soap, which is catching the decomposing hydrogen peroxide, the gas that's coming out, which happens to be oxygen gas, that soap's catching it, and that's the elephant toothpaste. So after watching that uh, example demonstration, we're gonna check out the next type of reaction, which is, which is a single replacement. One particle is trading spots, but it happens to be a metal with a metal or a non-metal with a non-metal because like particles replace. So in this case, we're having A replace B. They're both at the front of the alphabet, so they must be like. And we get AX plus B, or we're having Y replace X. These must be at the uh, end of the alphabet together, so they're both acting like non-metals. This can only happen, though, if the lone atom, like A, or like Y, is higher on the activity series than what it's trying to replace. So A has to be higher than B, Y has to be higher than X. We can check that activity series on our gold resource that you're allowed to use. It's on the single replacement side of that gold resource. And uh, you're looking to see if this atom is higher on that list. In these examples, aluminum is higher than um, iron happens to be, and chlorine is higher than iodine happens to be. So these reactions do go to completion, which is something that you do need to check for single replacement reactions. This example right here is actually going to be the one that we see as our uh, example demonstration. This is also known as the thermite demonstration. Take a look. So in this demonstration, we use a piece of magnesium to provide some energy to get this reaction going. That's the bright white light. A shower of sparks would be molten iron coming out of the bottom of that crucible. It happens to be a metal crucible that we just melted a hole right through the bottom. That's why the liquid iron could come right through the bottom of that crucible. So that demonstration is pretty darn cool. A lot of energy is being released during that demonstration. Um, and that moves us on to our next type of reaction, which is the double replacement. Two particles are switching, and in this case, it's the two cations. So A and B are going to trade spots to make AY plus BX. This will only occur if we form one of these two products. Uh, at least one of them needs to be either a gas, water, or a solid. Now, if it's a gas such as NH3 or CO2, those are really common gases that we form. We also form some gases in the form of nonmetal oxides, but uh, these are the ones that we primarily look for. Um, that will drive this reaction to completion. Water, of course, will be H2O or a solid. Now, to figure out a solid, we would need to use our solubility table. That's on our gold resource that you are allowed to use uh, for these, these problems and for these exams and quizzes. And it's called the solubility table. Um, it's also on the double replacement side of our gold resource. What you would look for is the two particles that are right here, A and Y, but of course they'd be actual chemical particles. And you would see, what does it say in that rectangle on that table? If it says P, uh, that would be for precipitate, which means it's a solid. In this example, barium and sodium switch spots. We make barium carbonate, which on our solubility table would say that this is a solid. And then sodium nitrate, which is the other product. Now, because this is aqueous, it doesn't form a solid. In fact, it's actually not connected right here. We just have sodium ions and nitrate ions. They're actually still floating around in solution, not bonded. These, though, are actually bonded to each other as a solid particle in that ionic bond that we talked about earlier this school year. The second example led to nitrate with potassium iodide. The lead and the potassium trade spots, we make lead to iodide, which is going to be a solid, and then also potassium nitrate. Now another thing that you can learn um, throughout this, this unit is that these double replacement reactions typically occur in solution, and we like to deliver the ions that are important using nitrates, sodiums, and potassiums because these are almost always aqueous. So if we see even one of these ions, either K or NO3 or Na, on the product side, we can basically assume it's going to be aqueous. It's most of the time, it's not always, but it's very, very often that we see those as aqueous. We're going to actually use this bottom reaction right here in our demonstration. So we're going to take lead to nitrate plus either sodium or potassium iodide in order to make lead to iodide. Take a look. Here I have two clear and colorless liquids being mixed together to make a yellow precipitate. Precipitate causes a double replacement reaction to go to completion. 
So after watching that last demonstration, we're moving into our final type of reaction, which is a combustion reaction. We can think of that as burning. The general format that I have for this is we're taking oxygen gas, which is uh, found in the atmosphere, so you don't normally have to supply that. And then we have carbon hydrogen um, with some kind of ratio. This is variable. Uh, it's just we're going to normally see lots of C and H in these reactions. The carbon ends up making the CO2 product, and then the hydrogen ends up making the water product. So if we have both of these with oxygen, we're going to make both of these products. And that is how we do our combustion reactions in our class. Of course, there's more complicated situations, but we focus on the general pattern here. Combustion reactions should be exothermic because there's tons of bonds inside this that are being broken and then forming into even more stable bonds right here. And in doing so, that releases a lot of energy, which is why we can use hydrocarbons, uh, lots of C and H molecules, to uh, provide energy for a lot of what we do, such as uh, gasoline in our cars or oil for heating uh, systems or natural gas for our furnaces. We're taking those uh, bonds and coming up with more stable bonds that releases energy. So here's an example of a combustion reaction. We have oxygen gas with, this one doesn't happen to be C and H, um, but it is going to be a combustion making water. Now this was also a synthesis reaction that we had as a demonstration, um, but because there's no carbon, we're only making the water product. This one happens to be ethanol with oxygen, and then here are those two predictable products, CO2 and H2O, that we're going to basically always see in our combustion reactions. And ethanol is something that's used, uh, for example, uh, E85 cars are burning mostly ethanol, and that's how they're producing the energy in order to drive on, on the road. The example that we're going to use, though, is uh, the combustion of methane gas, which is natural gas. That's what many of our furnaces use. But we're going to do it in a little bit more exciting of a variety of a demonstration. Take a look. So I have a tube connected to a gas jet. That's methane. We're going to bubble that into some soapy water. I'm going to grab some of the bubbles in that container with my hand, take a lighter, and combustion. After watching that final demonstration, you just observed five demonstrations for the five different reaction types. From these uh, slides, you should have the general patterns for these reactions, and hopefully you have that recorded on either your notebook paper or on your note card. And you're going to be able to use those reaction patterns when we get to predicting products and subsequent uh, excuse me, subsequent discussions. I hope that helps, and good luck while you're working on these problems.